The New York Times is reportedly conducting an internal investigation to identify the source behind leaked information about its coverage of Israel and Gaza. According to Vanity Fair, the internal investigation follows a report in The Intercept about The Times shelving an episode of its podcast, The Daily, over doubts regarding the accuracy of a highly controversial blockbuster New York Times article published at the end of December alleging Hamas members committed widespread sexual violence, weaponized it, on October 7. Vanity Fair reports that in recent weeks, management of The New York Times have questioned at least two dozen staffers, including producers of The Daily, the podcast, in an attempt to understand how internal details about the podcast's editorial process got out. Democracy Now! asked The New York Times about the internal investigation. The paper's international editor, Phil Pan, said in a statement, quote, We aren't going to comment on internal matters. I can tell you the work of our newsroom requires trust and collaboration, and we expect all of our colleagues to adhere to these values, end quote. The New York Times article at the center of the controversy was published December 28th. It was headlined, Screams Without Words, How Hamas Weaponized Sexual Violence, on October 7. In it, The Times reported they had found evidence of systematic sexual violence orchestrated by Hamas, and that their two-month investigation, quote, uncovered painful new details establishing that the attacks against women were not isolated events, but part of a broader pattern of gender-based violence, October 7, unquote. However, not long after the highly publicized article was published, major discrepancies began to emerge, including public comments from the family of a major subject of the article, contradictory claims from a key witness, and criticisms over a lack of solid evidence in the overall investigation. Then news emerged last week that one of the three authors of The New York Times piece, named Anat Schwartz, had liked multiple posts on social media advocating for violence against Palestinians, including one that called for turning Gaza into a slaughterhouse. Anat Schwartz is an Israeli filmmaker who had no prior reporting experience before she was assigned by The Times to work on the major investigation, along with her relative, Adam Sella, and veteran Times reporter Jeffrey Gettleman. On Wednesday, The Intercept published another in-depth investigation that further questions The Times article and the reporting process behind it. It's headlined, Between the Hammer and the Anvil, the story behind The New York Times' October 7th exposé. And the two Intercept reporters who wrote it join us today. Jeremy Scahill is a senior reporter and correspondent at The Intercept. He's joining us from Germany. And Ryan Grimm is The Intercept's bureau chief in Washington, D.C., where he joins us from. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Jeremy, let's begin with you. Can you lay out first the significance of the New York Times article that's at the center of the controversy, and then talk about your latest piece that looks into how it all came about? Well, Amy, in early December, uh, you had the death toll skyrocketing in Gaza. You had uh, a number of nations, including those that are allies with Israel, starting to speak out about uh, the death toll among uh, women, children, the elderly. Um, and part of a pattern of what we've seen uh, throughout the course of these five months of scorched earth attacks against Gaza is that whenever Israel perceives itself to be losing the narrative war, or when it needs to uh, remind the public uh, of its perception that Israel is the only victim in this story, um, they unload a new round of, uh, of attacks against a, a variety of, uh, of individuals uh, or organizations that um, are working in Gaza or living in Gaza, human beings. Um, we saw that with the uh, attacks against UNRWA, uh, we saw that with the attacks against Al Shifa and other hospitals. And in early December, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his government really began an intense propaganda campaign uh, to convince the world that Hamas um, had engaged in a systematic campaign of rape aimed at Jewish women uh, and girls. 
and then they launched this uh, this fake criticism of uh, feminist organizations, saying that they had all systematically failed to stand up and denounce this um, systematic rape regime that had been intentionally implemented by Hamas in the October 7th attacks. And on the day that Netanyahu made his most prominent uh, statement about this, uh, President Biden was at a fundraising event in Boston, and he issued he uh, made a statement uh, at his speech that echoed what Netanyahu said and said the world you know can't turn away and, and ignore this. Um, well, what was happening uh, at that very moment was that the New York Times, with one of its most prominent international correspondents, Jeffrey Gettleman, he had recently um, uh, hit the ground in Israel, and um, he was working. Gettleman uh, enlisted the help of two individuals um, that were going to work with him there, and Gettleman had proposed three uh, lines of investigation, and one of them was uh, sec the issue of sexual violence. And the two individuals that Gettleman was uh, working with. Um, one of them is a, a very young person who's uh, only recently gotten into journalism, Adam Sella. And he had uh, mostly been like a food journalist and has a background in looking at agricultural issues, et cetera. He had started to uh, write some freelance pieces that were dipping into the waters of, uh, of politics and the, and the conflict, but uh, a, a quite inexperienced reporter. And then the other was someone with no reporting experience outside of making some uh, documentary films, and that is Anat Schwartz. Um, it's unclear uh, how Anat Schwartz in particular um, got involved with this project. And as you mentioned, she had early on in the uh, Israeli attacks against Gaza um, liked a, a tweet that actually was cited by the International Court of Justice um, as a potentially uh, a statement of potential genocidal um, incitement. She also liked a tweet from the Israeli government uh, promoting the uh, debunked uh, uh, allegation that 40 babies had been beheaded on October 7th, which uh, is entirely false, um, as well as another tweet that said we must uh, just refer to Hamas as uh, as ISIS. Um, and so they they start off on this investigation. And our understanding from sources is that the overwhelming majority of the interviews and reporting that was being done on the ground was being handled by um, Anat Schwartz and Adam Sella. And we uh, we discovered a, a podcast interview with Anat Schwartz in Hebrew uh, that she gave where she it's a shocking um, a podcast in how much detail she offers about the process that they used when they were reporting it. Um, and just to, to put it in a nutshell, she describes how uh, the first thing that she did was start to call around to uh, what she describes as all of the Israeli hospitals that have facilities that are called room four facilities. These would be the, the intake places uh, where people uh, who have been victims of uh, sexual uh, crimes, including assault and rape, uh, et cetera, uh, where they would be examined or their cases would be referred. And she said that not a single one of them uh, reported that they had any reports of sexual uh, assault or rape on October 7th. Uh, 